Hello, everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital News YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up at Curtis and Porteous House. Spencer walked Trina to the door. Trina told Spencer that their weekend in New York City had been perfect. Every single second, Trina emphasized as she flashed back to her and Spencer making love for the first time. Spencer and Trina kissed for several seconds. Trina encouraged Spencer to head home to spend time with Ace. Spencer told Trina that he'd be in touch with her the following day. You'd better, Trina murmured to herself after Spencer was out of sight. Once inside the house, Curtis saluted Trina, who gushed with excitement about her trip with Spencer. Trina presented Curtis with separate New York Knicks and Brooklyn Nets headdresses as a gift from her trip. When Curtis bemoaned that he could no longer play basketball, Trina said that she felt shamefaced for enjoying her life, given that Curtis' life had been reared. Curtis said that he wanted Trina to enjoy her life. Marshall entered, and Trina smiled extensively when he asked if Spencer had treated her well in New York. Trina hugged Marshall, and she assured him and Curtis that they had nothing to worry about in regard to Spencer. Marshall noticed Trina's choker. Trina said that the choker was a gift from Spencer as a way to flash back their trip. Trina added that Spencer himself was enough indelible as she gentled the choker. Marshall spotted the Knicks and Nets headdresses Trina had presented. Curtis offered Marshall his choice of headdresses. Marshall chose the Knicks chapeau. Curtis was left with the Nets chapeau. Trina left to return to the dorm. Latterly, Marshall asked if Curtis truly felt that Spencer was good enough for Trina. Curtis said that he could not tell Trina what to do or who to be with. Curtis added, Marshall jounced his head in blessing. Marshall asked if there had been any progress on chancing the person who had shot Curtis. Curtis said there had been no updates. At Laura and Kevin's house, Laura and Kevin returned home from Switzerland. Esme rambled about having to take care of Ace by herself, and she said it that she was exhausted. Esme complained that she had been lonely. Laura asked where Spencer was. Esme did not answer. Laura enjoyed time with Ace. Spencer entered, and he smiled extensively at Laura and Ace while noting that they were two of his favorite people. Spencer produced a toy that he'd bought for Ace in New York. Esme reappeared, and she noted that Spencer was back. Spencer told Kevin and Laura about his weekend with Trina. Kevin said that he was happy for Spencer, who offered to put Ace to sleep with Esm. After Spencer and Trina had left the room, Laura expressed her relief that Spencer and Esm were getting on well. Kevin advised Laura when he noted that Esm sounded isolated. And all she has is her work at the Invader. She does not feel to have a group of musketeers. It's bound to be good disunion. Kevin advised, when Spencer and Esmu returned, Laura and Kevin participated that they had learned that Nicholas was alive. Spencer grew quiet, and he soon heard Ace crying over the baby examiner. Esmu left to check on Ace. Kevin tasted that Spencer and Laura demanded time alone, and he headed upstairs to make some calls. Spencer grew emotional when he said that Nicholas had abandoned him again, and he said he hoped that Nicholas stayed down. Laura said that Spencer did not mean what he would said. Laura wrapped her arms around Spencer as she sought to assure him. Spencer left to check on Ace. Laura called Valentin to ask about Charlotte. At the sanitarium, Stella said that Felicia would make a great addition to the staff. Felicia said that she respected Stella for the way Stella communicated with Case's families. As Felicia and Stella talked, Portia approached. Portia asked if she could speak to Stella in private. Felicia excused herself. Portia told Stella that Terry had offered Portia the position of co chief of staff. Portia said that she had turned down the offer, but she expressed to Vides about the decision. Portia participated that she had only been reluctant to accept the offer because of Curtis. 
Stella said that Portia should not put her life on hold, and she encouraged Portia to take the job. Also at the sanitarium, Finn asked Elizabeth on a date. Elizabeth said yes. Terry appeared, and she said that Amy had told her that two people had had coitus in the showers at the sanitarium. Elizabeth admitted to having kissed Finn in the showers, but she made it abundantly clear that she had not had coitus with Finn. Portia appeared, and she asked to speak to Terry. Elizabeth left to check on a case. Latterly, Portia told Terry that she had changed her mind about accepting Terry's offer of FICO chief of staff position. At Chase's apartment, Chase opened the door to Gregory. With gashes in both men's eyes, Chase told Gregory that he loved him. Gregory apologized for not having told Chase about his A.L.S. opinion sooner. Gregory said that it had not been fair to Chase, and he apologized. Chase told Gregory that it was okay. Finn joined Chase and Gregory. The three talked about Gregory's condition. Chase asked how he and Finn could help. At the corner main manse, Ned slash Eddie pictured that he'd been performing naked on stage and that Olivia and a dark-haired woman had been gaping at him. Eddie awoke and he told Olivia about his dream. Eddie said that it had not been the first time he would have the dream. Olivia encouraged Eddie to seek help from Kevin, but Eddie declined. In the living room of the manse, Brooklyn scolded Tracy for having told Chase about Gregory's illness. Tracy said that it had been an honest mistake, but Brooklyn mistoked Tracy's sincerity. They heard a repeated knock at the door. Formerly angry, Brooklyn yelled as she opened the door. What? Brooklyn cried loudly. Unknown to Brooklyn, Lois was at the door. Whoa, is that any way to hail your mama? Lois asked. Lois smiled at Brooklyn as they participated a warm grass. Brooklyn congratulated Lois on her hair and fashionable acrylic nails before Tracy intruded. Lois said that she had gone to Port Charles after learning that Brooklyn had been fired from deception. Brooklyn told Lois that she had been manipulated into committing commercial spying. Manipulated by who? Who would do that to you? Lois asked as Brooklyn glared at Tracy. Tracy left the room. Lois expressed nausea for Tracy. Brooklyn said that she had let her musketeers down and that she had merited to be fired. Lois dissented, and she said that only Tracy was to condemn. Just also, Olivia appeared. Lois and Olivia were overwhelmed with joy at the sight of one another, and the two musketeers screamed at the top of their lungs with excitement as they threw their arms around each other. At the same time, in the kitchen, Eddie asked if Tracy had heard Lois and Olivia's hysterics. Of course, I heard it. People in New Delhi heard it. It's a Bensonhurst eruption. Tracy said sourly. Eddie asked what Tracy had meant. Well, Olivia was bad enough, and now there is two of them. Tracy fooled. Tracy encouraged Eddie to see for himself. Back in the living room, Olivia agreed to give Lois a reciprocal room at Metro Court. After Brooklyn flashed back to Tracy having blackmailed her, she said that Lois should stay at the Quartermain Mance. I suppose Tracy would love having you then, Brooklyn said sarcastically. Olivia encouraged Lois to stay at the manse, and Lois ultimately agreed. Lois asked if Ned still believed he was any main. Olivia and Brooklyn were silent, attesting that it was true. Lois told Olivia that their neighborhood in Infantsonhurst had not changed at each, and they recalled old times. Lois added that her parents were both fine, and she scolded Brooklyn for not visiting more frequently. Just also, Eddie entered the living room. Eddie gobbled at Lois, and he said that he knew her. I should hope so. I am your ex-wife, and I am Brooklyn's mama, Lois said. Eddie surprised everyone when he said he felt he knew Lois from nearly differently. Thanks for watching if you liked this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.